how when you stack the the labels um, stagger them then you can see them a little bit quicker and it makes them easier instead of it being one level you can't see through to the, exactly to the back. yeah they're really they're really a neat a neat kind of a tool now we've shown the refrigerator over here that's a clutter for a lot of people notice how we've got magnet I love magnetic things on the refrigerator they work for holding keys for holding um, the one in the front works for menus takeout menus you want to quickly order pizza Chinese whatever they're also a wonderful place if you have papers that you need to sign before your children go back to school that's a terrific place a message center if you need to leave messages a little coupon holder if you're a coupon user write with your grocery list then that will show another thing that is that paper towel holder a magnetic, magnetic. Oh, they are nice. wonderful they also work on the side of, of microwaves if you have a microwave that's magnetic they also work there they're a terrific tool as well very nice all right what do we have here well all kinds of little tools here Mary this is one of my favorites it's a by the way all of these things we're looking at today are under twenty dollars mm -hmm. So, and there are many of them lifetime investments. I mean, once you get something like this, you'll, you'll use it forever. You may change the place that you use it. These are great in the kitchen to hang mugs, towels, whatever else. I use them, you can get ones that are a little bit painted differently than this, for jewelry. They're terrific mm -hmm. for jewelry. Uh, kids, if they can hang things, are more apt to do it. It's easy to do. So that's a, a really neat kind of a tool to use for a variety of things. Here's one of these. These are quite popular now. We're seeing a lot of these of dispensers that you put in your bathroom. Um, some people prefer to just have a, a hook that you hook over the shower. Some people like these. That's just if you like the smooth, clean look, then someone might prefer that. Here's a thing to organize uh, mops and brooms, and it also has a hook, so you can hang whatever kinds of things. Easy to put, self-adhesive, you can pop it up very quickly. Whenever I move into a new house, the first thing I do is go around and get up hooks. I'm a big, big promoter of hooks. They now, all these uh, organizing stores have peel-off hooks that you can just get up instantaneous. Do they work? Oh, per very, very well. Okay. I mean, they really, I mean, you can't swing from them, Mary. But they stay on there. <laughs> yeah, they really do. Hmm. They really do. And they're, again, great for kids. I put them in the back of all of our bathrooms as soon as we move in. It's one of the first things that I, that I do. This is one of my favorite tools. Look how it has holes in the bottom. One of my frustrations in the kitchen are these things always collect dust mm -hmm. and they're real. And so this one that's with got the holes in the bottom the dust falls through and it's much easier to lift this out Vacuum and dust it out, out. exactly it. exactly mm -hmm. here's another variety if you prefer this kind of a style if you it's got a little bit more different shapes and things like that so that mm -hmm. works well this can be used in a kitchen cupboard but you know it's also wonderful in a refrigerator, refrigerator. Mm -hmm. that's why we put these things on here because you can turn it around and that frustration of uh, you know the margarine being back in the back really uh, makes a big difference Many of us have smaller kitchens now, and there's not enough room for all the china. Or you got, I inherited four sets of china from my family, and I really like to use them, but there, are, there just simply isn't enough space in my kitchen. These are wonderful because you can store the china safely, stick it under the bed, which means it's not that difficult to get out, hmm. but it's still going to be safe. So, and they look nice and work as well. This is a really neat organizer in that it, it's on rollers, so it'll go in and out of your drawer uh, cupboard like under the sink right. particularly and that space is so inaccessible and this way if you pull it out you can do it works in, under the bathroom it's terrific mm. for under the bathroom so that works really well this is a fun one you know the junk drawer oh, we're going to spend some time that's the tough part I think yeah the, the, you talked about kitchens being tough i think that's yeah. one of the and this is really neat because notice how it's got labels in it okay see here I want my pliers here's all the different little things that might typically go in a junk drawer and these just peel off and you put it in there and then lo and behold that makes it easier yeah. and one of the things about organizing is that if it's easy to do people will do it and mm -hmm. labels make all the difference in the world it doesn't mean that people will always get them there but the chances are better my experience is that old adage about a place for everything and everything in its place is half right. The place for everything is extremely important. Everything in its place, I mean, not everybody's going to have it. But if you say, okay, today's cleanup day, and there is a place for everything, 
then, you know, it doesn't take that much longer. You brought along a junk drawer, and that's a tough one to tackle. We tend to I didn't bring this. I just gathered this from right around here. Boy, do we have junk drawers, especially. Did you take... Oh, that's right. That's from our kitchen. <laughs> Let's see. What do we have in here? Well, here's one. Here's a thing that appears in many people's the key junk to drawers. What? The key to what? Right? So... If, assuming you know what the key is, if you don't know what the key is, one of the things I like to do is have, when we're organizing houses, we often find them. So I get a container, a pretty vase or something like that, and all the keys that we can't identify, I put in there. And then when we're done, we can check and see whether we need it. And if we don't know where it goes at that point, we throw it out. But if you know where it goes, one thing we talked about on the refrigerator, the magnets on the refrigerator, and I really like those. That's the thing, if you come home from work, you put your keys on the refrigerator, then you're going to know. Here's something called a key keeper. So if you have lots of keys, you can list down here, you know, this is the condo key and this is the extra set of my son's key and all of it, and then just stick them right in here. Boy, you have to really be organized to have one of these. That's really... I, I wouldn't do this. I, I mean, really I, would never, I would never be that organized. But I know people, you know, who would do that. And it's not, again, it's not that difficult if you do it right away. So it's just one of those things that works if you like that particular thing. Um, notice how, here's an example, some thin wire very useful if you want it you know I mean if it's like if you need it and you want to know where it is then it's useful and if it not it's just junk which is what it ends right. up becoming so this is again where these kinds of things are really helpful putting like things together like one of the things we do with organizing is just getting all the tools together and getting all the mem memorabilia together and getting all the cleaning supplies together and that's what we're going to do in here uh, these are things for decorating cakes there's probably if we went through the cupboards up here there's probably other things like that as well so I would like to have a, a plastic box like a shoe box and I would just write on the outside of it cake decorating and put it in one of the less accessible I don't know about you but I don't decorate too many cakes. oh once every millennium or so <laughs> well next we're gonna show you the fun and excitement of recycling as we move on to the next level of spring cleaning <laughs> Spring house cleaning, and Barbara Hemphill is here. She has a, a book out called Taming the Paper Tiger, and uh, we're going to talk now about uh, gadgets uh, that will help us recycle, and that's all part of this house cleaning chore. Boy, this recycling has turned into something. So what do you have to offer us today? Well, here's one of the real easy thing. If you want, in your garage, you can stick this kind of thing in and put the cans and the bottles that you take back to the store. So it's real easy to just pull this out zip it up, throw it in the back of your car, and you're ready to recycle it. Okay, so. that's a pretty neat deal. Isn't that neat? Yeah, oh. that works really well. It works for dirty, I mean, they were intended as, they're marketed as dirty clothes baskets, but they yeah. also work extremely well for recycling. <laughs> just let it go, let it go, that's all right. <laughs> now down here... I could do that, it just takes a little time. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Now down here we've got newspapers, that's, you know, a big issue. These are different, different styles. Mm -hmm. If you've got a place to put them, then that helps. Um, they're all, they also come in wood and different kinds of things, so that's another tool. Okay. Here's an issue, you know, we get these little bags that the fruits and vegetables right. and things come in. So this can hang right inside your pantry door, and you can stick them in the top, and then when you're racing out the door and you want one, you can easily pull one out. They're really nifty. Okay, all right. This is interesting. I don't, uh, in our house, we've got the big, of course, here we have this big yellow box it's this it's a little bit bigger than this and we put you put your cans and your bottles and your and your papers all in that just kind of pile it on each other in there that's how we do it what's this here well here's another style this one you can label it whatever you're recycling here we've put on it magazines and so you just lift it up and throw it in, oh, in clear glass and tin and then when you're ready to empty it you can take it out and take it wherever you want to go Okay. So if you want to keep it nice and neat and tidy, then that's, you know, one way to do it. All right. Here's another style if you have less, less space. This is tiered. Notice how these come out. Now I can drop the magazine, goes down in the bottom section. Here we put, yes, we have some compost in here. Compost, the, the real, okay. The real oh. thing. Right. And, uh, and we tin. Can, and then tin we here. And look at here, if the camera can come up here. See, these are just peel-off labels right. so that you can put a sticker on here to tell your right. family which thing you're recycling and which bin. Or in my case, put the ones up there to tell you what not to put in there, and then I, you know, understand. Whatever works. Whatever works. Whatever okay. works. What's this one? 
Well, this is another little, if you don't have, if you have small amounts of things to recycle, a single person, for example, might not have much space, and that would work. One of the other things about recycling I think is important to say is it makes cleaning easier for people if they know that they're going to give it up uh, to some other kind of good use. Right. And that's true of cleaning out your closet, for example. If you're recycling your clothes to somebody that's going to use it, it makes it a lot easier. So I think that's one okay. of the real advantages. Look of at what you need now to recycle. Now, you don't need all of these at one you time. You need to have a room just for recycling. No, no, you no, know, no. Add no. on a 15th you room. You pick your favorite. Pick your favorite? You pick which one you like. Well, I mean, you have to have one for newspapers, but you don't have to have all of them. You, right. you can pick this one or this one or this one. Okay. Let's don't make this worse than it is. Neat gadgets. Where, where do you find this stuff? Tell, we want people to keep their pencils and papers handy because we've oh, okay. got at the end of the show a whole list of where all these things can, gadgets can be bought. Again, we're talking about anywhere from 5 to $20, depending upon what it is that you're getting. Okay. Next, what about all that stuff? piled in closets, the stuff you really need, you know, that you've coveted for a long time. Stuffed in drawers, stuffed in cupboards, like stacks of loose pictures, old CDs, old, old tapes from the 60s. Oh, don't you love those? <laughs> Videotapes and other important stuff you don't want to be a part of. Well, Barbara proves we can all clean up nice when we come back. Cleaning can make us, according to uh, Barbara, lead more organized lives, correct? correct? If we do it correctly. Especially if you have the right supplies. We're going to talk about that now. Here's some stuff, photos. Oh, boy, those drive some people nuts. They're just in those packets all over. And CDs and tapes and piled in a corner. Right. I want to back up just a second. Okay. I gave the price of the recycling stuff. It should be somewhere in the $25 to $30 range. Okay. Just didn't want to give people misinformation. Okay. Where do okay. we start? Photographs. Well, that's something that collects everywhere. And one of the things that's important is to identify why you want to keep photographs. Some people want to keep photographs for posterity. So it's really important for them for keeping them for the family history. Uh -huh. Some people want to keep them to use them. So if you're really into future posterity, then you're going to want acid-free boxes and things like that. Now here's something that I think is really nifty. This product's a show box. This is about, t you can get about for about $10. It does a lot of things. First of all, you can put the negatives right in here. Mm -hmm. You can label on the outside what the event is, you know, Johnny's graduation, whatever. And then here... Cat drinking it, out of toilet. <laughs> this is so well, funny. Well, that's what it is, a cat with his head down the thing. <laughs> look at these, look at this. We're playing look. with the computer. Now watch, now watch. See this? Change picture. Do it again. Change pictures. See how that works? Cat's making candy. That's like a slideshow. Cat playing with a Christmas tree. Uh huh. And you can store all the pictures in there, and all you have right. to do is... And it has a thing in the back that you can either stand it up this way, or you can stand it up this way. So That's it's great. really a neat item. This one is titled Miss Kitty 1993. Yes, okay. yes, Miss okay, Kitty. Okay, there's another pretty good one. Here's idea. another one. See, you can take them out of the envelope. Again, you've got them back from graduation prom or whatever. You can stick them in here like this, and then there's a little label. Mm -hmm. So you put the label on the top, and then you've got them all labeled together so they're really easy to use. Can you see what that is? Let me turn that just sideways. You see you've got a container section for every and then these set of pictures. You see that? So these flip. Again, they're easy to use, and lots of times if they're easy, we use them. Another thing is, here's another box that you can label them. Key to this is to keep it with the lid off, okay. because if it's in the, in the, um, hold it up so they can see it. if it's in the closet and other things get put on top of it and it's too much trouble to unload it, so you say, oh, well, I'll do that later. But if you keep the lid off and all you do is drop them in, it's just easier to we'll organize. put dividers in there. And exactly. Label them and show them what you, yeah, that's exactly. That's I have one. I had one client one time who had an antique trunk, and she just dumped all the pictures in there, but she put the dates and the places on all of them, and then she could sit down on the floor and pull them out, and so she used them. That was an example of where somebody wanted the photographs for the purpose of enjoying them as opposed to the purpose of saving them for the future. But it doesn't do you any good if you pull out a picture and you don't know what year. It's true. You have to keep the negatives with the pack of pictures. Well, you also have to label where it is, when it is, what, what but the picture is, who it is. But yeah. the things that help with this is at least if you put them, if they're together and it says Johnny's graduation, at least they're approximately then right. Then you figure Johnny's in there somewhere. Yeah, he's in there someplace. <laughs> yeah. or, or, and he did make it through school. You have to have a section. Men, I have dated. And you put their names on because you can't remember, correct? 
<laughs> okay. okay. This is where you want to practice the art of waste basketry as well. More, I mean, less is really more because if you have so many pictures, one time I had a client who mother died and left her 20 dressers full of stuff. And it was so much that she didn't enjoy any of it, where if she would have just gotten some boxes that were well-labeled, it would have had a lot more meaning. So there's one of the things you want to ask, is this the legacy I want to leave my children? Is there a rule of thumb on, well, I know about pictures, but you do have rules of thumb in your book that say, if you haven't worn it, used it uh, for six months or a year, get rid of it. Chances are you'll never use it. Well, again, that's a personal it thing. Is. It's a it's a real personal thing because you may say, for example, somebody cleaned out and said, the only time I'd wear this if I went to a Halloween party. Well, so create a costume trunk. You know, you can use things in a way. How old they are doesn't necessarily mean that they're not meaningful. A costume trunk. Trunk. Oh, yeah. Good. So that when Halloween comes, why well, you've got a thing. You to can select. put that in the recycling room that you've added on. You got all these trunks and things <laughs> to store things in. <laughs> Here's the thing: a lot of people buy greeting cards. And here's a, a real easy, inexpensive thing that you can sort them by category so that when you want one, you can find it. You can also use idea. it to sort greeting cards of people that you want memorabilia, greeting cards that come in to you of people you want to keep. Okay. Very nice. What about those CDs and magazines and tapes well, and things like that? Well, here's some examples, again, about tools that work. Baskets, you can use very easily, putting them like things together. Magazines, catalogs go in a mask. This is a favorite compact yeah. disc tool because everybody's got some little corner this will hang on a wall or whatever so having the right tool makes a lot of difference all right some information for you if you're interested the container catalog there's a 1-800 number you can call and they've got all kinds of stuff in there 1-800-733-3532 the Lillian Vernon catalog now there are a lot of products in the Lillian Vernon catalog that you saw today 1-800-285-5555 and hold everything that's at Pioneer Place on the third floor also there's going to be a book signing for the book that Barbara has written Taming the Paper Tiger today noon at Beaverton Book Company and the address is one 1773 Southwest Beaverton Hillsdale Highway, and the number there is 6447666. We thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Alrighty, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, Paula Gunnis is going to give us a medical update. Stay with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. client of mine moved into a new house. He said, oh, this is wonderful. There's a basement. You know, I'm going to put a big desk and a filing cabinet and everything down in the basement. It'll be just wonderful. He said, I hate it. After 15 years as a professional organizer, Barbara Hemphill can tell you what works and what doesn't when designing a home office. Number one on a troubleshooting list, the wrong location. I've been a freelance writer off and on for many years, so I've set up several offices on dining room tables and corners of kitchen. And this time I knew I was going to be here on a permanent basis. So the first thing was how to get an office into an 1,800 square foot house without taking over the 1,800 square foot house. The second thing was I realized I really didn't want to be in a secluded area. Well, this is effective for a variety of reasons. One is here's a case of where a formal living room area has been identified as a place to have a home office. Because the formal living space, in reality, we use what? Once a month, you know? Maybe once a week if we're a really active family. But an office, she's using every single day. So she's picked a place that she wanted to be. Filing system, very important. One of the reasons that many home offices do not work is that they do not have enough filing space. And the added convenience is that she's selected a file that is lower that gives her countertop space. Now one of the corrections or one of the changes that I would probably make in this office is this chair. Here a thing that would make an enormous difference would be a chair that would swivel so that she could swivel from here to the files to the computer with great ease. Uh, I grew up on a farm in Nebraska and my father used to say half of any job is having the right tool. Here's an example of where the right tool would really make a difference. It's a more relaxed atmosphere in many ways. I think one of the joys of a home office is that it can look like us, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't look professional. I think that uh, when people see it, they say, and I think subconsciously, they just say, gee, I wish I would have thought of it or I wish I could do it. For us, it was a net savings of about $300 a month to bring our office home. Plus, we reap the benefit of, of 
uh, owning it. Kate and Ted Berghaus needed lots of space if they were both going to work at home, so they built an addition, a second story his and hers home office that can easily convert back to normal living space if they ever sell the house. Before they designed it, they said, what do we need to be able to do here? So we have a place here for Ted to do the things he does in two different arenas, looking at drawings, sitting at his desk. Administrative people to sit there, storage to go over there, his wife's office to be out there. We've got a copy machine, we've got a um, fax machine, so that you don't have to run somewhere to do it, which is in fact what a lot of people have to do within their home offices. So having the right equipment really makes a difference. One of the things we're seeing here is that for him, contacts, staying in touch with people, is a really big issue. Um, so Rolodexes are, are really important. When I look at the, how crowded his desk is and how crowded some of this area is, he might be able to get rid of some of these things so that at least wouldn't be in his most accessible space. Like everything else, you know, there are good things and there are bad things. But a home office really allows people to be who they are and you want to present the best side of who you are to your clients. So I encourage people to walk into their office and say, if I were walking into someone else's office, what would I think when I walked in here? This is Kiplinger's personal finance report. Forty. How organized is your desk, your office, your life? If you filed something five years ago, could you find it today, right away? Chances are probably not. Most of us could benefit from being better organized. And here to help us this morning is Barbara Hemphill, author of the new book, Taming the Office Tiger. And good morning. Good morning. Just like that, you can't find it. <laughs> Most of us are drowning under paperwork. How do we get out from underneath of it? Well, first we want to recognize that paper is postponed decisions. If you just pile it up, it's not of any value to you. And paper information is power if you can use it and if you can find it when you need it. That's the big question. Find it when you need it. Right. How does an office go about setting up a system that actually works for them so that they can go file something and then when they need it, get it right away? Well, you hit on something that's really important and that is to set up a system. Unfortunately, in the past, this has been done by default. It's been relegated to be uh, a clerical thing and now companies need to recognize, management needs to recognize that paper is an issue but how that's do they here do to that? stay. How do they do that? What do they do? Well, they make decisions about recognizing what's really important in terms of setting up a system. Information is power if you can find it. And so one of the things executives have to do is say, what is it that we really need? But in the book you write about setting up an old-fashioned system and cross referencing it with your computer. How do you do that? Well, one of the things that we're beginning to recognize, I've been a professional organizer for 17 years, and we're beginning to recognize that the computer is not going to give us the paperless office. It, in fact, has generated more than ever before. 600 million pages per day. That's enough for 72 mile long filing cabinet. And so we're beginning to look at how we can harness the computer to retrieve the paper, not just the, not to digitize it and get rid of it, but to retrieve it, to use it as a way for value for us. You write in the book, instead of making names on the files, put numbers and cross-reference it with your computer. Absolutely. You also talk about the art of waste basketry. I don't even know if that's a word. Let's talk <laughs> it about is now. <laughs> and it is now. You take things and just throw them in the waste paper basket, but you say you have to ask yourself a couple of questions well, first. Research, I think we have a graphic of that, actually, but go ahead. Research shows that 80% of what we keep, we never use, and mm -hmm. I've proven it over and over. I mean, just ask the typical person to go into their files and open them up and see how many they're really using. And so one of the questions is, do I really need to keep this? Does it require any action? Mm -hmm. Does it have a specific use, just in case is not specific enough? Right. Um, is it recent enough to be useful? Would it be difficult to obtain again? Does it exist elsewhere? Those are all questions that are really important. And if you answer yes to those questions? Well, if you answer, if you answer no, then you can throw them away. If you answer yes, you're, you're going to keep them. And the important thing is to identify that there are two ways you can keep them. There are simply things that you keep in case you need. And that's what you put into a filing system. And many people, in fact, have never seen a filing system that works. All they see are these stuffed cram drawers. And one of the things I'm trying to teach executives is to say, this is information. This is not paper. This translates into customers, customer service opportunities, bottom line profit. And it's also good to point out that it can be liberating, though, to just throw a lot of the stuff in the waste paper basket. Absolutely. You make a good point. You say that you have to convince executives that this is no longer the simple job of an assistant. This is not administrivia. 
how do you get uh, executives to realize that they need to do this as well? Well, the average executive spends 150